Hey, hey, welcome everyone. It's so good to see you here. Happy Monday evening. This is November 7th, 2016. And I am Kristen Ostrander. And I'm Amy Fearman from mommyincome.com. We are so excited to have you here tonight. And we are going to be sharing one thing that you can do to thrive as a new seller during Q4. If you're new to Mommy Income, we just want to let you know who we are and what we do, and then we'll get right into how you can thrive in Q4. So first of all, I am Kristen Ostrander. I am an Amazon FBA seller for seven and a half years now. I've been on eBay for 13 years. I do currently do both businesses. I'm also an author, a blogger, a live video web host or whatever it is you want to call me and um, your personal mentor every Monday night. So that's who I am. And I'll let Amy tell you who she is. Well, thank you. Kristen could talk for hours. If you've been here before, you know that. I'm Amy Fearman. I am also a full-time Amazon seller. Um, I started on eBay, transitioned to Amazon. I've been on Amazon for five years now, um, and I love what I do, and I love getting to help others learn to do what we do because, honestly, I get to do what I want to do every single day. I have the freedom and flexibility um, by running my own business, and we hope that we can help you find that dream as well. For sure. So we are – you are – very excited for tonight's show because we want to talk to you about how you thrive in Q4. And let me, we're going to, you know, if you've never been here before, you know, this is like get real Monday. We don't like to sugarcoat. We don't like to lie. We don't like to pretend that you're going to make a million dollars overnight. We really want to make sure that you're thriving in Q4 and we know the struggle. The struggle is real. <laughs> um, I am balancing three different businesses at the moment and realizing that I am personally overwhelmed um, and I'm overwhelmed in a good way because every business of mine is growing hand over fist and that's great. Um, but at the same time, it's like, but there's not enough hours in the day. So I know you guys are feeling that way, especially if you're brand new to Amazon. So we want to make sure that you are thriving in the best way you can. So your required equipment for the evening is paper, pen. Come on, you guys are going to take some notes. I don't care if you use Sharpie. I don't care if you use note cards. I don't care if you know, you can write on the, your computer screen if you want to, but take some notes, figure out what the key information here is for you. So everyone's in a different place with their business. Everyone's doing different things. Everyone has different money to spend. Everything, everybody's buying some different products. So figure out what we're saying to you. We're talking straight to you tonight. And we want to make sure that you are going to pick on something that is going to help you thrive more. So get your pens and papers, do some brainstorming, write down some links, do whatever it is that you need to do because we really want you to have your best Q4 yet. So I have to take so, my own advice, first of all. Um, because <laughs> I, 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 this show is really for me. It's not really for you guys. Um, <laughs> it's totally for me because I need to thrive in Q4 and I need to work on exactly what we're talking about. And that's why Amy and I came up with this because we're like, what is the one thing that we always need? Um, one of the things that I think everybody struggles with in Q4 and in general, but we're talking hustle, bustle, Q4, beating the clock, selling out for November and December and even into January is organization. So can I get an amen or something from somebody in the audience tonight that has struggles with organization? I know I do. My office is organized chaos. Uh, I know where everything is, but sometimes it's just a little bit crazy. So thank you. I get some amens here and some yeah and some high fives and me, me, me. Yay. I'm not alone. That's fabulous. Um, so what can we do to get started? You guys ready? If you don't hear anything else and you leave after this, get your Sharpies and pens and papers and whatever and write this down. Figure out how to do things the exact same way every single time you do them. That is how you're going to stay organized, even if you don't have cute, neat little file folders and you don't have anything else. I mean, you guys have seen my bag of receipts, right? Like I keep them in a gallon size Ziploc bag. I put Sharpie on the outside of like 11, seven, and I know that the last one was dated. So if this one is dated from the last one to this one. So that's my system. <laughs> It's not much of a system, but it works for me. You got to do what works for you. So write that down. Do things the exact same way every single time so that they can track their progress, track their procedures, and make changes to things that don't work. 
just like you would teach somebody else how to do what you're doing, right step by step things. And then you'll know every single time you do things the same way. Do you know that every single Monday night I do the same thing right before the show, every single show? You guys all know you need code words, right? And of course, I'll give this to you early. It's Thrive. We'll talk about that later. But on the back of this card is information, information that I need for my own self so I can track progress and growth. I do the same thing. It's almost like a ritual. It's a habit. It's a thing. It doesn't mean anything to anybody else except Amy and I. And so you sit down. I set up my stuff. I sit down and I do what's on the back of this card. It's what I need to get focused and strong. So that's one of the first things that I want you guys to understand, no matter what it is, whether it's buying inventory, whether it's sitting down to track your progress, to write down your expenses, to, to bring in your inventory. Your process is super important because it needs to be repetitive because eventually you're going to grow so big that you're going to need to teach that to somebody else. And if you can do it over and over and over like routine, you can teach it to somebody else. It, it's really important to have that process set up because if you're coming in and doing something differently every single time, I'll give an example in my world. I pay quarterly taxes and for the first year I was in business, I would reinvent the wheel every single time I did that to remember where my numbers were and where I had to go and which website I had to go in for which different tax I was paying. I finally opened a Google document and wrote it all down so that every time I have to pay quarterly taxes, I go to that document, I go through the process. It's just like making sure you have all of the pieces to the puzzle together so that when you go to process a shipment, you're not scrounging for your tape or your Scotty peelers or your Google or whatever it is you need. It's all there in one place. So you can go there. Having those processes in place is going to move you forward. And even if you're not a checklist person or a process person, or you're just kind of like, oh, I could never do that. Believe me, I was that person. And I have learned a lot from Amy. Thank goodness. Um, she recognized, recognized my chaos and she's like, let me help you with that. Um, but, you know, I realized I had some processes for some things and other things I didn't. And so thinking about how you process the way everything that you do in your business. Even if you're sitting down every single morning, 9.15, your cup of coffee, your seller central, what's the first thing that you do? Because I don't like to talk about this stuff. It's not very sexy, but it's realistic. If something happens to you and you can't sit there and be there, maybe you have a husband, a neighbor, a friend, somebody you trust that you could say, hey, I am unable to be on the internet for the next week and a half. Here's my process. Can you just go through and at least answer these seller central questions? Or can you at least answer questions from buyers or put my account on vacation mode? Or every day I do X, Y, Z at least. Can you please just do those three things to make it more, um, streamlined so that you can actually get something done with that. So making sure that you track your progress and process. I mean, every single place you think of, um, stores that have chains, that's not just your mom and pop stores. They all have standard operating procedures. Um, they all, if you go into target and want to get a job, they train you the same way. Every time they have the same training materials, they have the same videos you watch. They have the same forms you fill out. Why? There's a reason there is. I was one of those trainers at old Navy back in the day and it's for a reason so that everything can be done consistently across the board. Now, We've talked about, we're talking about processes. We've talked about balance. We want to talk about a few of the things that we want to make sure in line so you can put the one thing that we're going to talk about into place. And we also want to make sure that, you know, it's Q4, right? And Q4 is not just about selling on Amazon. Q4 is a lot bigger than that. There's a lot of stuff that happens in October, November, and December. There's holidays. There's family parties. There's work parties. There's all sorts of stuff. There's Christmas caroling. There's firework, uh, fireworks, Christmas tree lighting. There's all sorts of stuff that is going on this time of year. And we don't want you to miss it out because you're so focused on selling on Amazon. So being able to shut it off, step back. One of the things when we moved into my current house was very important to me that I didn't have in our last house was be able to have a door on my office so that when the door was closed, 
not only could my kids not get into my inventory, it meant that I was, I was physically shut off from my business. The mind doesn't stop, but I was physically shut off. I could shut the door and not worry about what was on the other side of it. I could focus on my kids. I could focus on cooking dinner. I could focus on something else for a while. But when I didn't have that door, that focus was always pulled in different directions because my inventory was sitting right in the middle of my living room, always in my sights. Absolutely. And you know, we just talked about processes and we know how important that is. So if you don't get anything else, you write that down. I'm going to repeat it one more time. Do things the exact same way each time. So you can track progress, you can track procedures, and you can make changes to things that don't work. Just like you would if you were going to train somebody else to do it. Keep it in a folder somewhere. X, Y, Z. What is it that you do? And you realize that what you're doing isn't working because you're all over the place. You get up 50 times. You're like, Oh, I forgot my scissors. Oh, I don't have this. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, I forgot that I need this coupon or I need this, you know, and, and you're all over the place. So that is one of the things. And the reason we're doing that is getting to the one thing that you need to strive and thrive in Q4. And that's focus. <sighs> right? I can't believe it. It's mind blowing. It's focus, but we're going to teach you how to get that. And focus, you know, I go, well, whoop de do, right? Focus is so important. And this is, I, it doesn't matter if you are a new seller, if you are stuck at a plateau and you're trying to take that next step, or if you're a, you know, multi-million dollar seller, focus is important. If you don't have focus, you're all over the place and who knows what your business is doing. Okay. Who is guilty of this? Um, you're doing retail arbitrage, you're in a store, or you're in an aisle for a couple minutes and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, what's that on the top shelf? Oh, what's that over here? Pretty soon you're around the corner and you're in a different category than you were before. Anybody do that? You're halfway across the store and you were going to go for grocery re replants. You were going to go to toys and you end up in looking at the shoes. Me. <laughs> you know, who's, yeah, who's doing that? You're ping ponging all over the place. But what would it be like if you went in there and you had a piece of paper, a sticky note, a something, and it said, I will scan X for X amount of time, if that's what your plan is, or even on online arbitrage. The focus is one thing. We're going to focus on one thing, one business model for a time. If it's RA, if you're doing retail arbitrage, focus on that. If it's online arbitrage, you're going to focus on that. If you're doing wholesale, then forget the rest and narrow in as much as you can on that one thing. It's so important to narrow your focus. I know that as a new seller, it's so, there is so much information being thrown at you. There's so much, I do this, so go do this. I know that when I started, well, not when I started, but when I joined Scanner Monkey, when it first started, it was a bolo group and people were throwing bolos out left and right. So I was like, oh, bolo, be on the lookout, deals that you wanted to find at different stores. And I was like chasing bolos. And all of a sudden I was not finding anything because I was not finding the things that people in other parts of the country were having. I'm like, this is crazy. I was, I had what was called shiny object syndrome and whatever this person happened to post about, I would go and chase that for a while. And then I'd try RA and then I'd try my first attempt at wholesale, which was not a really good idea. Um, so I was ping ponging. I understand what that feels like. Even when you go into a store and walk in, I would scan. Oh, that looks interesting. Oh, that looks interesting. I remember probably two years ago, Kristen said to me, maybe it's actually not that long ago, but I was in Target. I texted her and said, this isn't working. I'm not finding anything. She goes, have you scanned an entire aisle yet? No. Go back and to scan another aisle and then text me back and tell me how much you found. Yeah. At least a cart and a half later. <laughs> See, you know, and that, that's what happens when you focus. That doesn't mean you're going to fill a cart every single time, but I have recently had discussions with people that have talked about, oh, well, I'm not finding anything. I'm not looking at, you know, this and that. And I thought, okay, did you pick a category and scan everything in an aisle? Or if you're doing online arbitrage, did you go to whatever section you're going to? Maybe it's shoes, maybe it's toys, maybe it's something. And you type in a keyword and you searched every single thing in that product line. When we're talking about this kind of focus and we say one thing, we want you, no matter where you're at in your business, to become an expert at one thing. 
So until you do that, you don't get to ping pong all over the place. You're going to become an expert in one category or one brand or one product line or one website or one store or one wholesaler. And I mean an expert so that when someone comes to you and says, Hey, have you done this? You're like, Nope. The only website that I'm really good at is walmart.com in the X section, in the health and beauty section, in the seasonal, in the whatever it is. You pick something that you feel like you've got even a little bit of handle on and you narrow that down and narrow your focus into one specific category or store or whatever. Maybe it's Walgreens. Maybe that's the only store you have access to and you say, you know what? I am going to become the Walgreens expert. I'm going to scan every single thing in that store if I have to. I'm going to know their sales. I'm going to know their manager. I'm going to know when their discounts are. I'm going to know everything about Walgreens. And then think about the possibilities once you get one of those under your belt this this brings me back to thinking about scott zilke he's a friend of ours who's also an amazon seller he travels the country he came to ecom chicago last year from where did he live before he lives in not there now he lives in alabama now but where he used to drive hundreds of miles and hit every right aid between where he was and where he's going he had a whole map situation he had a niche. He shopped Rite Aid and that was what he knew. He knew managers. He knew what was going to be on the shelves at different places. And he, he took that and ran with it and now has a successful <laughs> Rite Aid source Amazon business. And being able to have that kind of focus has opened up a lot for him as far as his knowledge bank, his relationships with those managers to be able to know things about how their system works. So that if you just went in store and scanned a Rite Aid, you'd be like, yeah, I didn't find much anything, maybe a couple clearance items, but he knows. He's scanned whole stores, he's met managers, he knows how their system works. You can have that same kind of information by narrowing your focus to one store, one website, having conversations with people. That focus opens up doors with a lot more information than you can initially see on the surface. And I'd love to give you permission to, you know, step a little bit outside of these lines. I do. And that's only because I'm, focused even when I'm out. So most of our stuff is wholesale at the moment. I did some retail arbitraging this weekend because I could not help myself with all the discounts that I had. I had coupons upon coupons upon coupons that basically make things like 60% off plus my tax exempt plus anything else. I like could not leave that stuff. But I also had a focus when I was going in, I went into a specific store. I called ahead of time to make sure they still had some stock and they did and they told me where it was and then they had some other things and you know i made it my business to make it be about one particular category there's tons of stuff in this particular store i mean the store is huge it's actually one of my favorite stores in the world but i was like no i'm here for this i need to stay in these three aisles because this is where the stuff is and then you know you got to stay focused so that really is what it is so what is that for you take a minute get your pen and paper i told you to be prepared um, and write down what you think that might be. Maybe you have three ideas right now and you really start to narrow it down. What is the best use of your time? What category do you know most about? November 7th is not the time to start becoming an expert at something that you know nothing about. I will not be selling auto parts during Q4 because <laughs> I know zero about auto parts. Does that mean that I can't focus on that in the future? Absolutely not. I mean, if there's a will and a way and there's a wholesaler and there's some profit to be made, I'm all in. But I'm not going to make myself an expert at something I know nothing about in the middle of Q4. That is not how you thrive. So if you don't know a thing about toys, you can make money in Q4 without selling toys. I don't have, I probably have seven SKUs right now that I'm selling that might be store, that might be store that might be toys seven SKUs last year it was probably more like 700 um so it's a lot different I have narrowed my focus all year long to the point where it's like I am growing my SKUs are shrinking and my profit is growing because I've made myself an expert at a specific category with specific things and that's what you can do too on a smaller scale on any scale no matter if you started yesterday or 10 years ago I love this topic, okay? Focus and it's what I thrive on. Um, but even now, I've, in the past two months, 
Okay, I've changed my focus from being 70% in one category to almost completely flipping that to being 70% in a completely different category because I saw potential. And the reality was I was sick of doing RA and the particular category I was in, it was grocery. I couldn't not do RA. I can't afford to buy a truckload of grocery products every single week. And a lot of distributors require that. And so I was looking for a different option, a different focus point that I could shift my knowledge into. And so it's not like you're completely dumping all that knowledge that you learned and jumping ship. It's focusing on what you know and using that and shifting. And if you need a little bit of help with that kind of focus and to know what kind of research, if you're sitting here scratching your head going, okay, this is great information. I believe you. I'm on board. I'm excited. I want to be focused, but on what? I don't know. Um, you have to take the research class if you haven't, or if you have, and you haven't read and listened to everything and downloaded everything, then this is the angry teacher face you get. Arr! Okay. But seriously, if you, the research class um, is a great thing for you to help narrow what you are good at, what you know about, it gives you a starting point of what to start looking at to sell. A lot of people that are brand new to Amazon or even slightly new, they're kind of like, I don't know what to sell. I don't know even what to scan. I don't even know what website to go to start looking up product. The research class helps you start somewhere because we all need a starting point. We all have a starting point and it's all up here. Mine is different than yours. It's different than Amy's. It's different than Joe Schmo. I'm um, sorry if there's actually a Joe Schmo out there. <laughs> I always laugh about that. That's just, everyone has a default name, Jane Doe, John Doe, Joe Schmo, whatever. Um, but seriously, like everybody has a different knowledge bank that they draw from and everyone's is different. So with the research class, it basically teaches you how to, extract your knowledge base, write it down, and then figure out what kind of products that you can sell at first. That doesn't mean that you have to sell all those things right away all the time. But we don't suggest, if you don't have any children, you don't have any grandchildren, we don't expect you to run to the toy aisle and expect to make sense of any of that. It doesn't make sense to you. It shouldn't. So, I mean, although, yeah, toys are a big deal in Q4. Um, so are, if you're, if, if you're not a parent and you don't have kids, what do you want for Christmas? What are you buying your friends? What are you buying your family? What are you buying everyone else that's in the, the you know, that isn't a kid? Because we like Christmas gifts too, you know. I'm not trying to get toys for Christmas. <laughs> My own toys, big girl toys. <laughs> so, um, you know, just thinking about those kinds of things. Everyone has a knowledge bank. In the research class, we're not going to go over that all in here, but that's going to give you the starting point, the launch pad to get you on the way of what you're going to start selling on Amazon. It's going to help give you and narrow that focus. If you're sitting here going, I, where? And I mean, it doesn't, if, if you're a newbie and you don't know where to start, that's great. I also find that focusing at my, you know, six figures on Amazon and I still need to remember, remind myself to go and focus and not be ping ponging. I, you know, you go to the grocery store and you can't help yourself. I'm still stuck in that mindset. And I made myself go for a two week stint where I wasn't allowed to buy anything for resale at the grocery store to break that habit because it was so ingrained in me that I would go to the grocery store and I would look for new products and I would look at what was seasonal that had come on the shelves and all that stuff. I'm like, this is taking away from what I'm trying to focus on right now. I don't need to be in the store spending time doing that. I need to go and focus on what I'm doing. And focus right now, I spent all day today focusing on wholesale catalogs because that's where my niche is right now. And I, that's helping me stay out of the stores and be unfocused and focus on what I need to focus on to grow my business, to get off the plateau that I've been stuck on for way too long. You guys want to bust through pet plateaus. You want to bust through some stumbling blocks and some roadblocks. Um, the, the beginning part of the research class is, is just like so essential for everyone to do, to pull from their knowledge bank and decide what they're going to focus on and just go 
with it. And just when you think you're giving up, just when you think that you're never going to find anything and this is so hard and I'm only focusing on this one category, you will find breakthroughs. People don't find what they're looking for because they give up too soon. There's a shiny object here and a shiny object there and guru teacher over here says do private label and this one over here says online arbitrage is where it's at. And these people are saying, but thrifting is all the rage and there's, you know what? Follow a tiny handful of people. It doesn't have to be us. You could just turn this off now and be like somewhere else. If you follow too many people and too many paths, you can't follow two paths at the same time. They don't always go in the same direction. You're going to have to split them and walk like this. If you walk on the same path, you're not narrowing it. Eventually, they're going to go like this. Even if they do, they'll separate. You can't follow that many paths at the same time. You have to pick one. You can always come to the fork in the road and choose a different path. But you, going like this is a waste of time. Really give it. And at the end of the day, if you decide that you really, you really feel like you've given it your all and you just didn't find anything profitable at all to sell, um, I'm going to tell you to do it for another week because when we say we give it our all, we've become exhausted. We've become annoyed. We've become bored. It's not shiny and sexy anymore. It's boring. It's this and that. It's frustrating. Um, welcome to business, everybody. This is <laughs> it's not, business is not always sexy and shiny and wonderful all the time. It is hard work. This is not a get rich quick anything. This takes time and effort. It takes taking those baby steps every single day to make yourself better, to grow your business. And if that's spending an hour scanning an entire shelf in the health and beauty category, then spend that time doing that. Give yourself that focus. It's a gift to yourself to narrow in to be able to not, to block out all the other people. Because in reality, at the end of the day, you're the one who has control over what your business does and how much it grows. Not this person saying this, not, th not us saying anything. Like you have control. You're the one who takes the reins and takes the information and makes it happen. You're the one who can give yourself that focus. Give yourself that gift, this Q4. Give yourself, there you go. Merry Christmas. Um, give yourself the gift of focus. Um, you owe it to yourself in your business to just say, and you know what? Let's be real. You know, I like my truth moments because I speak to me, not just you. I'm not just preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. I'm here with you. I'm in the business seat. I am CEO and janitor, just like you. Um, but that's the thing is that you've got to, we all say, oh, I, I looked everywhere and didn't find a thing. Um, truth moment is you are not allowed to jump ship until you've really done all that you could. You can say, I am the Walgreens expert. I am the expert at CVS. I am the expert at my grocery store. I am the expert in, you know, <laughs> sexual wellness materials. I don't know what it is for you, but whatever it is, you can say, I am an expert at this and I still found no profit in it at all. You can hang your hat up on that hook and say, you know what? I gave that my all and it just didn't work out, but you're not allowed to say that until you've actually done it, until you've actually put in all the effort that you need to put in, in order to say at the end of the day, I have no guilt. I have no shame. I did everything I could to make this work and it didn't work or I'm thriving because I did finally find the honey holes that I was looking for. So you're not allowed to quit and give up even on your singular, singular focus until you get to a point where you can say, I did all that I could and it still didn't work out or in fact it because I, there are times where I'm looking at wholesale catalogs and websites and I'm typing keywords in and I'm not finding the right products and I see this in the catalog, but it's not online and then I have to call the rep and you know, just there's, there's roadblocks and stumbling blocks and no one else is going to do it for you. And you can't call your manager and say, Hey, this isn't working out. I mean, you're it. So that's when you have a coffee break, have a tea break, have a cocktail. I don't know. And then you just take a breath and be like, okay, I'm coming back at this. And I am going to do this until I find at least one product that I can make profit on. And I know we'd say when you have your process in place, don't change it. But if it's not working, if you're going to a store and doing the same thing day after day after day, isn't finding you profitable product, 
tweak it. And we're not saying, okay, I'm giving up on RA and I'm going wholesale. It's not. It's taking it and changing it slightly. Maybe what you're looking for isn't something that you're that familiar with or that comfortable with. Change your process slightly, try something different, and see how that changes your perspective. Now with that, because you said that, that's what I was gonna say. With the processes, eventually you can change it. But what we do is we track what we're doing and do it consistently for a time period for maybe three weeks, two weeks and consistent. I mean, if you're doing RA and you really have a really small budget, RA is the place to go because with smaller budgets and RA, number one, you can ship it right away. Number two, you're not paying any shipping and hopefully on certain stores, you're not paying sales tax. So RA is a very good flip it quick kind of business model. There is room for it everywhere. Um, I still do some RA and I still, you know, even pay a little bit higher at an RA store if I can ship it in today. So it's one of those things. So if that's your model, ping ponging and saying, oh, this, like Amy said, this looks interesting. I'll do that. This looks interesting. Amy found focus that day. I told her you go and you scan everything on the top shelf, everything, whatever the aisle is this big, every single thing. Don't skip things based on visual appeal or what appeals to you or whether you don't. If you're in that aisle, everything's fair game until you learn something or fill your cart or are out of money, one or the other. That's when you can quit. You know, when you've scanned every single product or you've spent all your money, that's when you can quit. And time and money are the two things that really drive this business. If you have more time than you do money, you spend more time focusing on the research and figuring out next time you get a disbursement, what am I going to spend that on? You're already going to know instead of going out and wandering around the stores after that money comes in, know what you're going to buy so that you can walk into the store with a list. Talk about focus right there. You have a list. You're going to buy that stuff, put it in your cart. You're going to walk out. You're going to send it into Amazon. You're not going to be doing the wandering around the aisles aimlessly because you have, and you came in with a plan and you came in with focus. Absolutely. You know, and, and we can't say enough about plans and processes and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Everyone wants to say, Hey, you're going to hit pay dirt every single time. Guess what? You're not. You guys ever watch Gold Rush? I don't, I'm not a big TV fan at all. I don't really watch a lot of TV, but my husband watches um, a few things and Gold Rush is on um, the Discovery Channel and he just is very intrigued by this Gold Rush show. And so I've sat down and watched a couple episodes with him. And what I love about this show is that um, they, they show the sexy and the not so sexy. These are gold miners. They're making millions of dollars. But there are times when they mine for a week straight and they get barely enough to feed themselves and they lose money. So it's not like, hey, we're making a million dollars every single time we put dirt through the wash plant. They're not making gold um, every single time. Sometimes they don't hit pay dirt. Sometimes the ground is frozen and they can't scoop it up. Sometimes it's just not good. Um, and so making sure you focus on that and not giving up when there's bumps in the road, because that's a lot of times people want to throw in the towel and say, oh, I'm, you know, you know, you're not chasing um, a dead end until you've done and uncovered every stone that you've done it every which way. And that's part of the process. If you write down what you're doing every time and you're systematic and you have a process and a plan for everything, then you'll know what you can tweak in order to make it right. So maybe it's a category tweak, but your process is the same. Your research is the same. So that's another one of the things that you can focus on. If you guys have any questions, make sure you let me know in the Q&A session while we're doing that. So we talked about products to sell. We're talking about your focus. We're talking about making sure you, you become an expert at one thing. So that's part of your brainstorm session that you're going to have with yourself and try to figure out what that one thing's going to be for you. If you've been selling for more than a year, then you have last year's Q4 to look at and say, what did I sell last year? What flew off the shelf? Can I get it again this year? Do they have a different model or a different variation or a different something else? And we can't even, you know, this is my shameless plug for Black Friday. If you guys are shoppers at all for Black Friday, which I am. I know she's really not. Um, but if you're not going to um, do Black Friday or if you are, now is the time that we're getting excited. There's lots of ads coming out every day. So I'm like, oh, look at 
all these ads. I'm getting excited about what's for sale on Black Friday. And I will definitely be out and doing my own personal strategies. So if that's something that you're doing right now is the time to be looking. There's so much information. I go into Black Friday with a list, a team of people with, that are armed with gift cards, ready to buy stuff at different locations. And I'm ready. Uh, it doesn't take us that long. We're not hustling and bustling for that long and standing in long lines because we have a process that works, a team of people that go in. And even if you don't have that, you can still have a process. You can still have a way of what exactly you're going to do. You don't go into Black Friday shopping with your scanner and you're scanning things. You already know because they give you the information ahead of time. You already know what's going to be profitable. And then my UPS people have called me and said they're doing Friday and Saturday pickups this year um, for Thanksgiving weekend. Woohoo! That means my stuff's going to get there a day or two ahead of time, and that makes me happy. So um, having a plan and a process is just so important once you get your one category, your one product line, your one store figured out. It's all about that one thing. That's your gift to yourself, that focus. Now, I can see, you know, people like, well, what, what huh? <laughs> I know that focus didn't come easily to me. I always heard people say, when it clicks, you'll start seeing dollar bills everywhere. I'm like, I'm not seeing dollar bills anywhere right now. And it took me focusing to be able to start seeing dollar bills in this section. And once I could see dollar bills here, I would start expanding that and trying new categories and starting to look at different things. But once I could start seeing them in one place and understanding that one niche, that one thing, I could then expand it outside. You know, talking about knowledge bank, one of the things that I brought over is some of the knowledge from when I sold on eBay. Some of that knowledge is relevant for what I sell on Amazon. I've picked products specifically based on the knowledge I learned when I sold on eBay. So just because you're not selling on eBay or you're selling on eBay and you're interested in Amazon, that information comes over with you. doesn't matter what you do or what you've done in the past. It's going to come with you and you've got that to grow on. Absolutely. That is so important. Everybody has somewhere where they can pull from and things that they haven't thought of. And it's just one of those things, like, especially in the research class, we cover that as far as where you can find your knowledge bank in order to get the products that you can start focusing on. And so, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, we've talked about your focus. I feel like you guys are well equipped to, you know, have a brainstorm session after this. Maybe you're more of a morning person and you're getting up early, make it the thing that you do in the morning and figure out what you're going to start focusing on and then narrowing it down right now. There's still time, but we are on some deadlines. So we're going to talk a little bit about those things. We've talked about research, but now we're going to talk a little bit now that we have our focus. So we're going to pretend like we already know the one thing that we're focusing on. Let's start talking about quantities. Let's start talking about how much inventory to buy, pricing issues, deadlines. So now that we're focused, we're going to talk about that. Okay. Deadlines so important this time of year. You're going to start shipping more often if you can, if you're able, um, because it's taking 10 to 12 days for your stuff to go live. So today's November 7th. So if you send in a shipment today, you know, 10 days from now is the 17th of November. So even two days after that, 19th, you know, people are really into Thanksgiving. If your stuff's not shipping out this week for, for the actual Thanksgiving, you're going to miss it. But this also means Black Friday, right? You're preparing for Black Friday right now. It's the biggest weekend of the year also online, not just in stores. So you need to be stocking your shelves. Send product in this week. Your deadlines are so important because things are taking longer to get there. Yeah, someone just posted 48 days left till Christmas. Absolutely, 48 days. So within that time frame, there's also your shipping deadlines and deadlines of, you know, to start, when do you start merchant fulfilling items because you can't get them to Amazon? Um, now, you know, that you have plenty of time to get them to Amazon, but if you, if you held some back, um, you can send those things in 
or keep them on your shelf depending on if you're comfortable with Merchant Fulfill. I personally like to send most things to Amazon, but at the beginning of December, I will, in fact, actually I picked up some stuff this weekend that I will be clenching my fists on until uh, the right timing because I've become an expert in this particular toy line and I know right around the 10th of December and the, even the 15th people are going to panic and they're going to pay triple for what I have holding on in my little back corner over here because I know that people are going to get desperate and they're going to want those and they're going to sell them so I'm hanging on to them until then. Um, that's based on experience. That's not just based on a hunch. Um, the same thing happened to me last year with these particular items. Unfortunately, there's store by store limits so we can only get a couple per store but we got as many as we could. So that's something that you can consider merchant fulfilling starting in a little bit. You know, once you realize it's not going to get there in time for FBA buyers um, or you're just worried about it and you know you can ship it personally, it's time to list it merchant fulfill as well. You can ship it same day. Always ship at least priority because this time of year you never know. You don't want to lose a sale because you didn't get it there in time. Yeah, that's an important one to pay attention to is people have a heightened sense of urgency this time of year, especially the closer to Christmas that we get. Um, shipping times are longer and people really, really want it there for their holidays. And so making sure that you give them the best experience that you can as an Amazon seller, making sure they get it as quickly as is possible. Now you don't have control over the US Postal Service or UPS or FedEx or whoever it ships through, but or the Amazon courier who keeps coming to my house, which cracks me up every single time someone at Amazon sh shows up at my house. But know that you did the best that you could. That's all that you can do. So make sure that you do the best that you can to get your buyers what they um, are looking for in the time that they expect. Okay, I wanna know if someone knows the right answer for this question. Um, there is actually a right answer. Um, how much inventory do you buy and stock on your shelf? Like that, that there's a right answer for this, believe it or not. It's called every dime that you have to spend on inventory. That's the answer. Um, you ship it all in how much to buy. Okay. I can even tell you in my seven years of Q4 experience on Amazon, um, I still never buy enough. I always run out of things way before I thought I was going to run out of things and I go, dang, we should have bought way more than that. Four more cases, this, that, the other thing. You know, and sometimes I've cleared shelves and I wasn't able to find anymore and still was like last minute going, you know, I had a, a bundle that I created this particular holiday season for Thanksgiving and I thought I bought plenty and at first it wasn't really doing, it wasn't selling, you know, I sent it in very early. So beginning of October and Thanksgiving's not even for, you know, 16 more days. So beginning of October, I'm like, oh, it's not selling. And all of a sudden sold out in like four days for all, no reason whatsoever. Just all of a sudden it was like, oh, I sold none. Then I sold everything. And I had time to order online and buy some more and send some more in. And those sold out even faster because the time is getting closer. And then towards the end, I'm like, no, there's none left. And it's all gone in the universe and it makes me sad. But so you learn for next year and you can narrow your focus next year. Now, part of this focusing for this year is not just you gaining perspective for the here and the now. It's allowing you to become an expert in this one thing. And then you are an expert going ahead next year. This is what Kristen's been talking about. She's become an expert in a couple of different categories that she can now utilize to supplement the new focus that she has because she can take that have that in her store, and then be focusing on this over here. So th this is so important to document your processes, document where you're shopping, when you're shopping, what types of, you know, how many units that you actually send in of something in particular. You know, you don't have to, you know, trace every onesie, twosie item that you send in necessarily. But if it's something that you could potentially get in quantity in the future, future or maybe say next year, maybe by this time I'll have a wholesale account with such and such and I can order case quantities of that. That happened to me this year. From last Q4, there was something that I sold off of retail shelf and I said next year by Q4, I'm going to have an account with them and I'm going to order X amount of cases of these and I did that and I have it on my shelf at this moment and it's going to sell out very soon, probably before 
Q4, whatever, before Black Friday, or I'm hoping it will last till then, but hey, if it sells out now, then I can reinvest that money even now. So make a plan and a process, document what you're selling, figure out what are your good sellers, what worked and what didn't. You're al there's always going to be something you're going to be left with. You're like, oh, that was a doozy. That was, you know, we all make some bad buys that might be a good buy at the moment, and then it turns into a bad buy. So, we you know. We all have those. Doesn't matter how experienced you are, we all have those moments, right? I know Kristen does, I know I do. Um, I like this question because this is one we get all of the time. Chris, I'm gonna let you read it and answer the answer. Okay, so the, the question is, um, when do you start seeing the major uptick in sales? Because I've seen a little bit of uptick in sales, but not you know a big the big bang quite yet. Um, it's going to be starting about the week of Thanksgiving is when you start to see the major influx of sales. And of course, I'm going to tell you, it's going to depend on what you're selling. Um, most people are going to see a big influx between, let's see, the 21st of November all the way through like December 19th even. Um, and that's when the curve kind of really goes up there and you kind of see this curve of when you see it. Because um, that's really when all of a sudden Thanksgiving comes and goes or it's upon us and then people all of a sudden are starting. Some people are planners and they're already done Christmas shopping, but other people aren't. And they're like, okay, we've had Thanksgiving. My husband's like that. My husband's like, we're not talking Christmas until the turkey is carved and the leftovers are gone. Like he doesn't, I'm a little bit different, so we compromise. Um, but I, I mean, I would probably have my tree up like next week if I could, because I love the Christmas season. I love all the, the music and the plays and the lights and the shows and the all kinds of, I mean, I go to every Christmas thing I could probably go to um, that time allows. I just enjoy the season so much. I love giving to people and seeing their faces and getting excited about that and making cookies. I do like all of it, like no joke. Um, and... <laughs> I love it. And I would start now. And he's like, no, the, the music. No, nope. can't till after Thanksgiving, no decorations, no trees. Like just he, he's, you know, and a lot of people are just that way. They just don't think about it until later on. So that is really when you start to see the influx. And the good thing about Amazon two day shipping is people realize I'm one of these people that they can, I know the last day that I could order something and still have it be under the tree before Christmas because I'm a last minute Lucy. Amy's more of a planner. And so she wouldn't even chance ordering something like on December 20th. I so did last year, like four things. <laughs> but like, That's crucial. Not how I roll. But I will say that the more that I've sold on Amazon, the less prepared I've been because it used to be that I could focus more on shopping to give as gifts. And now it tends to be I'm shopping and then go, oh, wait, it's a week until Christmas. I didn't do any of my shopping yet. Oh, no. What do I do now? Um, and so it's about make that that guy goes back to the making sure you shut the door and focus on the real meaning for the holiday season, not just the going crazy and selling insane amounts of things because people spend ridiculous amounts of money this year, time of year. There's so much more to the holiday season than just that part. It's a good part, but it's not the whole thing. And I'm going to address Betsy's thought here. She says she sold in, in the past on Amazon, but didn't, doesn't have anything in but books right now in the, the information overload. That is one of the reasons why we're telling you to focus right now because there is information overload. You can't hang out in 17 FBA Facebook groups and expect to get any information that you can work on. You have to decide that you're going to only hang out in a couple small places, follow a couple people that you know and trust, and then do what you need to do for yourself. You can keep learning and learning and learning. Learning doesn't put coin in your pocket. Learning doesn't put stuff on your shelf. Learning doesn't help you um, do anything. You actually have to take action on that. So narrow it down, figure out one place that you can hang out and ask questions and focus only on that because the world is noisy. 
the fa Facebook is noisy. YouTube is noisy. Everybody's noisy. Uh, there's, there's, there, you can go on YouTube and search FBA and get probably 20 to 30, maybe even more, um, expert guru, teacher, mentors, whatever out there. There's tons of people talking about FBA out there. Um, some who are extremely qualified and some who are extremely unqualified. Um, and you'll know that probably within the first couple of videos that you see. Um, what I'm saying is stop doing that. <laughs> Figure out a couple of people that you know and trust. Again, doesn't have to be us. We're happy to have you guys here. But, you know, if you don't relate or, you know, it's just not something you're into or videos are too long or you don't like my ramen noodle hair, then <laughs> you can move on. But the reality is you, whatever, whoever you decide to follow, whatever path you decide to take, stay on that path. Stop jumping ship from here to here to here to here and going from this group to that group to this YouTube channel, that YouTube channel and this and that and pretty soon all you've done for eight hours is kind of learn the same information over 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 and over from five different people and you then you, you got shiny object syndrome and you're still right back where you were what if you took that same amount of time and you shut off the social media and you learned one thing from this video because you're already here so you're already learning at the moment and you decided I'm gonna sit down for eight hours and instead of being on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube that I'm going to be on Line, researching stuff on Amazon that I can sell in my store and then I'm gonna find where I can buy it and I'm gonna go buy it and put it on my shelf that will make you money I will that there if you struggle I, I struggle with that so I understand the whole social media checking my pending orders too many times a day Kristen has been trying to break me of that habit for two years now we are not successful in that department yet working on it but if you struggle with that and you're like well I can't be online and not have those things open there are apps out there there are Chrome extensions that will you can set the number of hours a day that you're allowed to be on that and then after that it goes blackout you can't access Facebook from your computer and if you need to put those things in place to be able, allow you to give you that focus, take the time to do that. I will post one in the mommy income group. I have to do some research as to the one that I used before um, because it helps you narrow your focus. When I wrote my book last year, it really helped me to block out all of that noise so that I could focus on writing the best content that I could without every five seconds going, oh, I wonder what I sold. Oh, I wonder who's talking about whatever non-relevant thing to teaching a newbie on Amazon, to sell on Amazon. You know, I needed to focus on that particular thing. So it doesn't matter what your focus is right now, whether it's selling a particular niche on Amazon or writing a book, it's all the same thing. Find something that works for you and if you need additional help, Come to the Facebook group and I'll put a post in there about it. Well, and here's the thing, writing down specific times of day that you'll check social media. I recently learned this on a podcast and I, and I'm, forgive me for not sourcing it directly because I don't really remember, but <clears throat> recently they've done a study on notifications on your phone, whether it's the bling, the ding, the, the messenger or your text messaging or Twitter, Facebook, Periscope, any sort of notification noise on your phone actually triggers your body's anxiety reaction um, like a, a an immediate emergency response kind of a reaction in your mind even if you don't get it right away it's like this little ticking clock in your mind to where even if my phone's over there and I'm doing something over here or it's plugged in in the back or even in the other room yet I hear it ding it's almost like this part of your brain can only focus on that thing until you take care of it because in your mind you've got like it's like this anxiety like not necessarily anxiety like worried nervous but it's almost like an emergency response and you're like i i have to go see that and figure out what it is i have been using airplane mode on my phone lately when i have to first of all um even if you have small children and they they are children outside of the home I do I have three kids that leave my house every single day and you know they're in someone else's hands and whatever else but even for one hour number one if they can't reach me they can always call my husband and all the other people in the emergency contacts but even for one hour even if there's an emergency like number one you probably can't do anything about the emergency anyway uh, number two is it's not really an emergency so there, I mean, there are real emergencies. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that what, how many times in the past six months has there been an emergency where someone has 911 called you and was like, you have to get here right now, this and that. I mean, it's very rare. 
Um, so everything that goes off and dings and buzzes and whatever is not urgent. So put your phone on airplane mode for an hour to where those messages will come in as soon as you turn it back on so you don't miss anything, but you don't have that emergency response constantly going off, dinging, buzzing, vibrating, whatever else. Literally silence it or put it on airplane mode so it doesn't bother you because then you don't have that in the back of your mind when you're trying to focus. It's something kind of, it's just naggy back here. It's like, hey, didn't you hear that little chirp? Don't you want to listen to it? Don't you want to see who's kind of contact you? You are very important. I bet it's really fun. Maybe you're missing out on something. Oh my gosh, you're missing out. You better go get that phone. Like this happens, you guys. It's real. So it happens to me. That's why I'm saying that. That's, there's that voice in my head all the time. It's like, oh, who's texting you or messaging you? And you better answer it right now or else I got to turn it off, people, because, you know, I got business to do. You guys got business to do. So you don't need to be on 24-7. So just keep that in mind when it comes to your focus. I know we're all guilty. We have 14 million different social media platforms that we need to be important on 24 seven. So um, just breathe and breathe. Focus. focus. That's the one thing we want you to take away from tonight is to narrow down and focus. That's and how you do that. The steps were to figure out what you're focusing on, write down your processes in order to know exactly what you're doing. Having a key ahead of time will really help you to know what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and I'll, I'll give you my other tip. I've shared this in many other shows before. I'll share it again. But number, the other thing is at least for an hour at a time or maybe a half hour if you can't wean yourself on to an hour, but put your phone on airplane mode and put it in a different room. You've got everything you need right here to be niche searching or doing whatever you need to do. Maybe it's somewhere else because it will take time if you stop and answer messages and emails and, you know, whatever else. And the one thing I do to stay focused is I have a timer running like all the time because if I end up being distracted by something, I use Google timer, like literally type it into Google. It says timer and you can set it for as much time as you want. This helps me. I do 15 minutes, of course, because I've got my 15 minute hustle chart. If you guys don't know what that is, go to mommyincome.com and it's right on the front page. It's called our 15 minute hustle book. It's, it's free. You can download the chart. Um, mine's laminated and filled out and looks like this because um, I use it every single day. It's my lifeline. And if I don't do anything else, I do the four things on that list. And the 15 minute timer running in the background dings at me only to be like, okay, it's a reminder of what I need to be doing. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing at the moment? If not, I can refocus. Yeah, if you get down one of those rabbit trails and I know that they're easy to do, especially when you're focused on what you think you're supposed to be focused on, but all of a sudden you end up on some places way over here. And it's really easy to do, especially when you're on Amazon. I know that I worked hard to focus on that one today. Um, I'm not as good at using a timer. I look at a clock and say, I have until X hour to do this. And then I focus on that until that X hour. And it's usually hour increments at a time. Um, 15 minutes works for me in certain instances. Um, and I do make, I do allow myself to take breaks. You know, you don't have to go in and sit and focus on something for long, long periods of time. It's giving yourself those breaks and go, okay, I took the break. I can come back and refocus. And the reality is you come back and refocus. I was trying to convince my husband to do this because he tends to get narrow focused and then can't see the bigger picture and can't see the different way of looking at a problem. Sometimes it's coming out going and doing something else and coming back and going, oh, well, why did I think that last time? That's easier if I do it this way. So it's changing sure. your focus. It's whatever it, whatever it's going to work for you. You know, at, like we are different in the way that we handle that and you're going to be different too. So whatever you think is going to work for you, but some of these key points work for everybody. I mean, turning your phone off or turning it into airplane mode for an hour, that's going to work for anybody's focus, especially if you get a lot of messages or your email comes to your phone or for if you're actually the, one of those people that have notifications turned on for Facebook on your phone for certain things, Lord help you. If I did that, my phone would go off constantly. So I have all my notifications turned off on Facebook. I actually have to go in and look at my notifications. They don't come to my phone because otherwise, Oh, I would be a crazy woman. I'm already a crazy woman. So that would just make it worse. So we just hope that this helps you um, to stay focused. This is how you're going to thrive, not just in Q4, but 
in your business in general. Q4 is so crazy because of all the family, because of all the fun, because of all the exciting things. And there's always something that's going to be demanding your attention. Of course, it's the busiest season for our businesses. So having processes in place, um, keeping a handle on your calendar and figuring out when you're going to do stuff, even if you're not a planning type person, like get with it. You're going to need to be if you're going to be a business owner because no one else is going to, you know, push you forward and you're going to wonder why you missed Q4 because you didn't stick to a calendar. That's going to be on you. So we just making sure that you're kind of following somewhat of a schedule and a plan, figure out what works for you and be repetitious and be in that schedule and be in that process. So give yourself the gift of focus this holiday season so you can thrive in this Q4 and going forward in your business. All right. If you're not in our Facebook group, we have a private secret Facebook group that you need to be a part of. Um, and that's where you can focus. You know, there's lots of great stuff out there. Um, we would love to have you join us because we want to help you. Um, we're not hanging in there 24 seven, constantly bombarding you with things. We want to answer your questions. We want to be there for you to mentor you, to help you, but also we want you to get down to business. So we're not going to bombard you 24 seven with all kinds of stuff, but we want, we're there to answer your questions to get in. You need a code word. And this is it. It's upside, it's upside down. down. <laughs> thrive. Hashtag thrive. You will want you to thrive in my little red Christmas green because why not? My red and green for Christmas. We want you to thrive in Q4. Come and mommyincome.com slash join us and enter your keyword, your code word, your thrive, whatever and say that you've seen us, you've seen this video, you um, want to hang with us because we'd love to have you in there. But you know, it's invite only, you know, because that's how we're keeping it real. Uh, no drama and no, you know, craziness or okay. yeah, no spamming no any of that stuff we just want to hang out with you guys and help you build your businesses whatever that means even if you're not doing amazon we still want to hang out with you so come on um so there's that don't forget the research class because you know you need that um unless you're you know just already an expert, then, you know, come hang out with us. We'll interview you. And then you can tell us your research tips. Um, mommyincome.com slash research. The class is available right this second um, for purchase and watching it. And uh, we had so much positive feedback with the class that um, it's one of my favorites because it's so important to, to know the, to learn these skills. Um, so there's that. And of course, next Monday, there won't be a regular Monday night show. Next Monday is our Black Friday webinar. And you can only come to the Black Friday webinar if you have purchased Stephen Smellerman and I's book. And the webinar is free with purchase. It's book slash webinar. Um, we're going to go over some live stuff. We're going to look at some live Black Friday ads. And we're going to get into the goodies of how you're going to thrive in Black Friday. So if that's something that's for you and you're participating or you're thinking of it and you want to do Black Friday, then this is the class for you. The book is available instantly. Uh, the class is next Monday night. So we won't have our regular um, live show. We're doing that Q4 or I mean Black Friday show instead. So, and thanks for joining us, everyone. Again, you can find us at mommyincome.com. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.